Welcome guys, and in today's video we're going to be tattooing fake skin, but more importantly we're going to be testing some different types of fake skin, some different brands out. So you guys want to check that out? Then let's go! So right off the bat, I just want to go over what skins we have. So we'll start with the thinnest and probably the worst. If you've seen it, you know. If you've used it, you know. This is that super, super thin fake skin. I don't even, I mean, there's, it's really thin, guys. Really, really thin. Now, as far as price goes compared to these, you can get 10 pieces this size, 8 by 6 for $15. So it, it seems like a good deal. It seems like it's, you know, good money, value for money, but I'm here to say it's not, and I haven't even tested these out, but I already know this is not your best value for money. The next one up is what we're familiar with. This is what I use pretty much all the time on the channel. I've used this thin stuff once or twice and said, no thank you. And then I went with this and yeah, it's okay. I use it for demonstrational purposes for the most part. Like the last piece, this really has no brand. There's no branding behind what this is. This is just tap, fake skin tattooing nonetheless. But you can get five sheets of this, but eight by 12 sheets, five of them for about $35, and that's what I went with, and that's what I've been using. And that's pretty much it. So I'm curious to see what the next couple of pieces have to offer in comparison to these. So next up on the list here is Real Skin. Now this is interesting, this is like delicate, stretchy, a um, little bit transparent, or transparent, <laughs> translucent. A little translucent. You can get this in an individual piece of 11 by 16. It's gonna run you right around $25. And that's one piece, pretty good size piece. But if it's good, then it might be worth the money, but we're gonna find out. And that brings us to our final piece, which is a pound of flesh. Now this is a bit thicker than our real skin. You can compare this a little bit more to maybe the stuff we have been using as far as thickness goes. But however, this feels a bit nicer. It feels feels interesting to say the least. But you can pick up a piece of this stuff, 11 by 17, for right around $45. Is that a good deal? Again, I don't know. We're gonna have to find out. But this is the most expensive. Pound of flesh is the most expensive. Um, but we'll see if it's worth it. So after we've gone over those real briefly, now I'm gonna slap some stencils on them. It's a very simple stencil. I just want to see how it sticks to the fake skin. How does it dry? How does it go on? This, that, and the other. Let's find out. What I currently use to apply stencils is stencil stuff. You can use other products, and we're gonna be doing a video in the future testing those out. So these are all of them all lined up. This was the very first one we did, the thin piece. It seemed to go on pretty good onto that. Uh, next piece, then we have our real skin, then we have our pound of flesh. I'm going to let these dry for a little while, and then we're going to jump back in and start tattooing these. All right, today we're going to be using the CNC Q2 with a nine standard round liner, long taper, loaded up. We're also gonna be doing a little shading with each piece, not a lot, just enough to figure out how it goes. Now I've only given it maybe like 10 minutes, I should probably give it much longer. I'm impatient, especially when it comes to fake skin, and my battery's dying on the camera, so we better get to it before we just don't. So I'm gonna load up some black in here, I'm gonna run a few lines over here, get familiar with this fake skin, and then we're gonna jump in and tattoo this little stencil. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've used this this fake skin and for good reason. And our line still looks pretty crappy because again this is some pretty crappy fake skin. 
And if we flip it over, there's nothing blown through, no problems there, so maybe we can go a little bit deeper. Nonetheless, I'm just gonna jump over here and start running some lines on this, do a little shading. We got plenty of fake skins to get through, so let's keep going. I think I'm gonna quit right now because there's really not a lot of point in moving forward with this piece. It's a pain in the butt. I remember using it a little in the past and thought, boy, this really sucks. But I'm telling you right now, this really sucks. It's really not that good at all. Sure, it's affordable, it's cheap, but just tattooing it, it feels horrible. It wipes away really bad. Now you can use Normally, you can use some inkies or Vaseline or a &D, wipe that on there and get the majority of it off in a wipe or two. But with it being just so thin, it's so difficult to even work with. I'm gonna quit here and I'm gonna recommend that you guys just don't use this. If you are, if this is what you have, then so be it. Work on it, do what you can, do the best you can with what you have. But for now, I think it's a wrap on this one. No bueno, stencil stuck well, went on well. That's about the end of it. So that brings us to our next piece, which is the stuff that we use regularly. Again, you get five sheets of this for I think like right around $35, quite a bit bigger. Is it great? I don't know, I've used it. Is it better than the rest? I don't know. I know it's better than that last piece we just used. No, thank you. So here we go again. I'm just gonna run a couple lines, get comfortable again, and then we'll jump in and actually tattoo this little piece here. Okay, so after just a couple lines, I think we get the gist of this, so let's do a little lining here and move on from there. So, so far, this feels okay. Uh, again, it's probably because I'm kind of familiar with it. I do have to dive my needles a bit deeper than I would in real skin, so I'm curious to see how that works on these other skins. Is it a little more realistic in needle depth and whatnot? Who knows? But so far, I mean, this is tattooing just as I remember, and it's quite comfortable. Now, is tattooing fake skin similar to tattooing real skin? Eh. Not really, but the fundamentals are what we're working on here. We want to get good fundamentally before we jump into skin. Okay, so real quickly, there's our piece. As far as that goes, there was nothing I wasn't already prepared for, wasn't nothing I wasn't already used to. It felt decent. Again, needle depths, eh, a little tricky when it comes to these fake skins because they're dense, not quite like real skin. You have to go a bit deeper. You have to move a little bit slower, but I'm used to that because I'm used to working with this fake skin. Nonetheless, as you can see, the lines went fine. Everything was a hokey dokey. If I were to let my stencil dry a bit longer, I could have wiped a little bit more, but again, I keeping it simple. So next we're gonna jump over to a Magnum bug pin and we're just gonna see how this shades. Even though we kind of already know if you've been following the channel, but we're gonna do it anyhow, just so we can document it. Okay, so now we're gonna start doing just, I'm just gonna mess around and shade maybe one of these leaves, just get a little bit of a, of a feel for it. So here we go.
Yeah, I'm just doing a very simple whip shade using about a 25% black. I'm gonna jump up to a 50% and darken up the base down here a little bit and uh, we'll move on. Okay, so there we go. We shaded very quickly and easily one of these little leaves or whatnot. This is just a very quick and simple way to explain it. Also, I'm going to do a little pendulum shading in here and just get comfortable going back and forth. And there we have a little bit of a gradient, a little bit of some soft pendulum shading. We're gonna darken it up just a little bit here. So yeah, that works out just fine. Again, it feels comfortable. It feels like what I've been doing when I do work on fake skin for the videos. So. Good there, it gives me a good base to move forward onto the next two pieces. Again, that last piece, we're forgetting about that. Don't waste your money, don't waste your time. Also, I wanna compare how these wipe off. Again, the first one, horrendous. This one, decent, at least I can clean it. At least I can throw a little bit of this inkies down, wipe it on, wipe it off, and get some of the ink off. So, there's that one. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, next up is Real Skin, same setup. Everything else, same paper towels, yada yada. I'm gonna run a couple lines over here, see how it feels. We're gonna jump in, line it, shade it, and go from there. Right off the bat, right as those needles went into that real skin, holy crap, so different. All right, we gotta run another line. This is kind of, this is crazy. What's going on here? Okay, so I've been running a few lines off to the side before I start tattooing the actual little piece we have here, and it tattoos totally differently. Well, I shouldn't be so dramatic, maybe not totally differently, but it definitely is different. The needles just kind of softly go in, but I will say it vibrates so much that it's really hard to see what you're doing. Even when I'm stretching the heck out of it, it's still just vibrating like crazy. Can't really see or tell exactly what's going on all the time. But again, it was just the first few lines I've ran. I haven't worked with this at all, but I will say as far as needles going into skin, the fake skin, the feel of it is far closer to that of real skin than it is to the previous piece. Meaning this feels more like real skin. Tattooing it feels more like real skin and the fact that the, the needles like gently go in. It's, it's weird, but it's pretty nice. I think with some practice, I could get pretty comfortable using this stuff. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get super comfortable today, but you guys are gonna see what happens. So let's do it. Again, that stretch is really important here. See how stretchy this stuff is? Bruh, bruh, bruh. Try to just put it there. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. It's on there. I'm not thrilled with it, but hey, you know what? First time messing with this real skin. And you know, it has some similarities. Is there a ton? No, you're not gonna master duplicating real flesh on on, on fake skin. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. But this is pretty close. This is pretty close and it was actually kind of crazy when I put those needles into the skin because they actually just I didn't hear a whole bunch of crazy like it's hitting rubber or something or or whatnot. It it just like butter just kind of went right in there and I had to almost back off a little bit cuz I didn't know what was going to happen. Which which makes it a little more like real skin and makes it much better to use than the prior stuff. And the reason why I say that so far is that it's going to train you better to be ready for uh, real skin in that um, you can't just dive your needles in and ride the tube all the time. You have to stretch it a bit more like you would real skin. A lot of things so far are, give me that sort of feeling. Now again, I'd have to mess with this a little bit to become more proficient with using this fake skin, but so far, I mean, really, it's not bad. We're gonna throw a mag in there, do a similar shading technique, and see how that feels and goes. All right, now I'm gonna jump up to my 50%, play with that a little bit. Okay, all right, when it comes to shading, so far, so good. Uh, it really, it, it took the ink way quicker than I had expected, especially coming off the last piece where I already knew I had to kind of give it a little bit more, go a little deep, do things a little bit more aggressively than it would in real skin, and then come to this and almost have that same technique, that same motion, and realize, holy cow, it's taking ink way quicker than I had expected, which is fine. It just wasn't ready for it, but I caught it and we moved on. And so far, so good. I like how it's shading. I'm going to do a little bit more of a pendulant shading off to the side, get a feel for that. And then, uh, hey, we'll jump in and try out the next one, which is uh, a pound of flesh. A little interesting in how you get these different dots or whatnot. It's not like stimpling per se, but it's definitely interesting. I'm gonna mess around a little bit more and see if I can't kind of get comfortable with this. Maybe see what's going on here. So there's the pendulant motion. Again, it feels really nice. Like I don't feel like the needles are bogging down just to get anything in there. I feel like it's flowing quite nicely. The look is a little different. It doesn't look like I'm used to. I mean, clearly you're getting the nice pendulant. You know, it, 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 I'm getting the shade that I want, but the look is a little different. I don't know if it has something to do with the way these, um, we'll call them pores are or whatnot, uh, but it looks like a little splattery here and there. And like I said, not familiar with it. I'm sure if you work with it some more, uh, it'll get a little easier. But so far, the feel, the physical feel of this skin, when the needles are in it, I say again, feel really good. And for that reason, I would definitely go with this over the last stuff we just used. I wasn't sure if I was gonna feel that way, but I do. Nothing blew through the back. Again, like I said, it's a bit, um, you know, translucent. You can kind of see through it just a little bit. Um, so therefore you're gonna be able to see your work through it as well. So definitely a great option. The price is right in there. What I say about 25 bucks, I think you can get a decent piece of this and you can cut it and break it into pieces like this and practice with this. Again, this was this stuff was sent by a subscriber and I really appreciate it. And it, it's good for me to learn as well so I can help you. So with that being said, that's real skin. Let's jump into a pound of flesh and see how that goes. And then we'll come back and wrap this thing up. Okay, last up is the pound of flesh. I'm gonna do this the exact same way we did everything else. We'll shade it, do everything the same way. So let's get to it.
Okay, just after making a couple lines down here on the bottom, just move my hand around a little bit. To me, what I notice is this feels like a cross so far between the stuff I usually use, the no name thicker stuff, and the real skin. And I say that because the needles go in quite nice and there's just that little bit of resistance about the spot where you would expect it to be. So for that, I do like this. So that is nice, but again, I haven't used it. We haven't shaded with it at all. So I'm gonna jump in here real quick, start lining this piece out, see how it goes. Maybe it'll come out good, maybe it won't, but we'll carry on from there. As far as wiping away the ink, I think this might be the best for that so far. Pound of flesh, wiping away the excess ink seems to be um, the best. So on this piece, I seem to be losing my stencil, not a ton of it, I can certainly still tattoo it. But it is going away, and I don't know if that has to do with maybe the material, or if it was just the way I put on the stencil. Maybe I just didn't do as good of a job. I don't know, I kind of see myself getting pretty comfortable using Pound of Flesh. It, it feels like it's got the right amount of resistance. Not quite as soft as real skin. That stuff was pretty buttery soft. However, this is where we got with that one, using the Pound of Flesh, the nine round liner. It felt like it was an in-between of the real skin. And again, like I said, that stuff that I've been using. So still very nice. It has the capability to stretch quite a bit, so stretching is still a real thing here. Getting your hands placed, getting things pulled apart. Solid stretch is still important. I'm gonna jump to the mag, do a little shading again, and see how it feels. All right, we'll jump up to some 50% black. And just work in the bottom here. Okay, so there's shading in this piece, and I definitely have to say stretching when shading, stretching when all of it, but I did notice at first I was just not really stretching it, just running it and I wasn't quite getting as much of the effect as I wanted. And then I was like, okay, you idiot, stretch it a little bit. But once I stretched it a bit and started running the same motion, things started to happen the way I'd expected them. It felt good, no concerns there. Definitely, again, with this skin, like most fake skin, you probably are gonna have to go over the area multiple times, if, especially if you're building shades up. Unless you know exactly the shade you want, you're still probably gonna take a few more passes than you would in real life, but nonetheless, it's still, it's getting used to the motion, the feeling, it's all good. I'm gonna do a little pendulant shading, see how that feels, see how that looks, and then we'll talk about it. You try to get a good stretch here. I do like the look it gets when shading. It does capture those needles, it captures things where I don't think the real skin was. It got a little patchy here and there, but this seems a little bit smoother. I'm gonna darken it up just a little bit as I get more comfortable here.
So when it comes to the pound of flesh, I kind of compare it to this stuff a little bit. Not exactly, this is much better quality. However, when it comes to just how it feels and how it tattoos, this is a better, this is a better version of this. In that, um, again, it feels similar, but this is a bit tougher. I mean, just pushing on it, it doesn't give as much. This, however, pushing on it, it does give. It squishes. So I think you're gonna be far better off with something like this as to a piece like this, especially when you're learning. When I'm suggesting a fake skin here, I'm trying to think of, of comp how it compares to real skin. For me, I, I mean, if I wanna practice and play around and try different stuff, I can continue to use this because I understand how using this translates to real skin. I understand this because I've used this. I'm comfortable with this. Now, this and real skin are better for sure. However, when it comes to cost and things like that, this skin is going to uh, probably work best for me. Being that I don't do a ton of fake skin tattooing just here on uh, on YouTube for the most part. But what if you're at home and you're practicing and you're trying to get something that is as close to the real thing as you can, it's definitely gonna be great to think about a pound of flesh and real skin. Again, you can get this a bit thicker. This is a little bit thin. However, it did tattoo well and that stretch is somewhat realistic. So I'm gonna line them up. We're gonna take a quick look at them. So as you can see here, guys, this was the first piece. Didn't even finish it. Super thin. Honestly, save your money. When it comes to this piece, similar to what, well, it is exactly what we use in most of our videos. And I think it is decent value for money. You can work on both sides. It is a bit tougher, a bit thicker. It doesn't quite stretch as much. So you do have those things to think about. The fakes or the real skin has so much stretch to it. It feels really nice, very realistic. And I bet if you got this in a bit of a thicker uh, grade, you'd probably have even more success and fun with it. But it shaded well, it wiped the ink off well. The stencil stuck just fine to this piece. I didn't really have any problems. I, I enjoyed using it. I can definitely see that it will take a little time for me to get comfortable because I'm always used to something a bit thicker like this. But still really, really nice. Realistic for sure. Now we we'll jump over here to Pound of Flesh. Good material. It's a lot like this over here. But it is squishier. It's just squishier, which means the needles are going to be going in a lot smoother. They're going to be flowing a little bit more realistically. And it shaded really well. It, it, this shaded to me somewhat realistically how it would in the skin. At least using the needles that I'm using and the familiarity I have. So if price didn't matter and I had to pick one, what would I go with? The way they are laid out here right now is the way I would rank these. One, two, three, four. Well, this one I wouldn't even rank. I, I'm sorry, I own tons of this because I, I don't even know what happened. I ordered a bunch of it, I got a bunch of it a while back. I still have tons of it. But we're gonna say this is, this is just a no. Don't even waste your time. Don't waste your energy. These are the three and they're all actually pretty decent. Again, there's not this crazy dramatic, dramatic difference between them. You're not gonna go from tattooing this and you go and buy this one and you're like, I'm gonna be a master now. It, it doesn't, not quite that way. Um, they're different. You're trying to get as close to real skin as possible. Let me know in the comments if you've messed with these and you have a specific type that you like more than another. If there's a brand out there that you're just in love with and you use it all the time, let me know. I'm always open to try new things, hear things you have to say. Guys, I hope that you learned something. I hope that maybe you're out there thinking about what fake skin should I get. I hope this video helps you out. I'm gonna have links in the description to where you guys can get this stuff. And again, I just wanna thank you guys for taking the time to watch these videos. I noticed only 30% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. I hope today you decide to make a change and smack that subscribe button and go on the journey with us. So if you enjoyed the video today, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell to get notifications when we post, when we go live, anything like that. Until next time, guys, peace.